Good day. This is the fourth PowerPoint in a series called CS Made Easy. In this PowerPoint, we will be focusing on the ISP, the Individual Support Plan. If, however, you have more than one learner in your class with the same needs, you are allowed to compile a group support plan in order to support those learners. On the basis of the information gathered, an individual support plan is formulated to support the learner and a review date is set. Such plans should be reviewed at least twice a year. That is the minimum requirement. The ISP is completed by the class teacher, but after the learner was referred to the school-based support team, the ISP should be adjusted according to the suggestions that were made by the SBST. The person responsible for applying the strategy of intervention usually is the class teacher. In some cases, it might also be the principal or the learning support teacher. The time frame usually is one term. However, it could be one semester as well. The review date, if a time frame is one term, would be at the end of that term. We need to remember that the ISP is a working document and should be reviewed and adjusted on a constant basis. One of the aspects that can be addressed within the ISP is the learner's behavior and social competence. Underneath this heading can be included self-regulation. Self-regulation is the ability to monitor and manage your energy states, your emotions, thoughts, and behaviors in ways that are acceptable and produce positive results, such as well-being, loving relationships, and learning. Self-discipline. The learner's ability to take responsibility for his or her own learning and to work according to and within the set boundaries. Self-concept. That is the learner's image of him or herself. Decision-making skills. Organizational skills. Conflict management. Socializing or interpersonal skills as well as adopting social values. The ISP can also address learning. We should, however, understand that learning is a complex process. It is a journey and it includes a variety of aspects, such as focus. Now, there's also a variety of reasons why a learner might experience challenges when it comes to focusing in the class. It could be that the learner is struggling to see or that the learner has poor hearing. It could also mean or be because the learner hasn't had a decent meal or is not eating nutritiously. Or it might be that the learner do not, does not sleep enough. The learner might be emotionally compromised. The learner might have attention deficit disorder or attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, etc. Then there's critical thinking. Now, critical thinking is the analysis of facts to form a judgment. The subject is complex and several different definitions exist, which generally include the rational, skeptical, unbiased analysis or evaluation of factual evidence. In other words, the learners can think for themselves. Problem solving. Problem solving does not just refer to mathematical problems, but also to everyday problems. For instance, there is a spark and a fire starts in the house, but it's an electrical fire. What can the learner do? Should the learner go and fetch water to put out the fire? This is an example of a practical problem that needs to be solved within the learner's life. 
then there's communication but once again communication can refer to verbal communication which can be affected by hearing or a speech deficit but also it can be affected by a lack of vocabulary then there's not just verbal communication but also written communication reading and body language to mention a few reading is part of a learning process and once again a child may experience challenges when it comes to reading i do not want to say problems but challenges when it comes to reading due to a variety of aspects it could be that the learner has problem seeing it could be that the learner has dyslexia it could could also be that the learner has not had a good foundation laid at the beginning of his or her school career writing there the the issues or the challenges can vary from uh, fine motor skill development the wrong pencil grip to many other aspects then study methods we need to understand that each learner has his or her own study methods some learners can sit still and just read and study this way other learners need to walk around because they are connect more kinetically inclined other learners need to see pictures because they're visually inclined other learners need to read the work aloud because they are auditory inclined we need to help the learners discover their own study methods and develop it and then motivation some learners are not motivated at home because their parents or caregivers do not understand the importance of learning or the learner might not be motivated because he or she is emotionally drained due to violence in the community etc we need to be able to address all these aspects and those that were not included in the list when we are addressing the learning aspects within the individual support plan another aspect within the isb that could be addressed is assessment once again focus plays a major role some learners cannot focus for long periods of time and these learners might need a break in between in order for the learners to be able to take a break we need to apply for an assessment accommodation then time management communication this mostly refers to reading and writing if a learner is not capable of reading the questions we need to have intervention plans in place that allow the learner to still complete the assessment if a learner cannot write down his or her answers then assessment accommodation should be made in order to allow the learner to orally answer the questions interpretation some learners may not be able to interpret the questions if that is the case we need to add examples to our test papers or pictures etc reading the question paper writing the answers study methods once again and motivation there are different types of assessment adaptations we will briefly just look at a few size will be an adaptation for instance if a learner has difficulties with his vision or her vision the font can be increased of the assignment or the test may be reduced in length we want to know whether the learner has learned something not necessarily whether the learner can do a lot of the same thing so instead of asking five addition sums we can limit it to only one or two then difficulty the direction may be simplified and read to the student if need be it might be that the learner knows what to do 
but because he or she does not understand the question or understand what is meant with the directions that were given, the learner cannot do it. Therefore, we are allowed to change the instructions or simplify it or give an example. Number two says cues may be provided by the teacher or assistant. So if a learner does not know what to do, then we may give an example because it might be that the learner just does not understand the question, but they can still do the work because they have learned. Or we can provide pictures if a learner is more visually inclined. Input, students may work in groups. This of course will only happen during continuous assessment and not during formal assessments. And the students may have access to computers and calculators. Uh, students will engage in hands-on activity. In some instances, the learner might possess the skill, but the learner might not be able to explain the skill. They will be able to demonstrate the skill. So we will allow this learner to demonstrate the skill practically instead of describing it verbally. Or in writing. Then output adaptations. Instead of answering with paper, students will be able to answer verbally. The level of support, a personal assistant may be employed if a learner has physical challenges and this personal assistant will be allowed to cut or hold the paper etc for the learner. Students may also work as peer buddies but once again, not during formal assessments. Extra time may be given for a task or more time for a learner to learn concepts. What is ideal is if we can allow students to work at their own individual pace. Participation, adaptations to which a learner is actively involved in a task will be monitored for or adaptations to the level of participation during a task will also be monitored. Then alternate goals. Each student will have a task when working in a group. For instance, when we have cooperative learning, we can ask one learner to do the research and another learner to give the feedback and yet another learner who might be more visually inclined to draw the pictures and the schematics. So we allow each learner to be involved according to his or her strengths. Now, as we've mentioned, a lot of these adaptations, we need to understand that many of these are assessment accommodations for which we need to apply. It is a formal process and this application for assessment accommodations or adaptations will be addressed within another PowerPoint. Thank you for your time.